couldn't think of a better way to invite you into the organ console here than with the beginning of Bach's great toccata in D minor. Uh, some long piece, a uh, piece long associated with, with the pipe organ and the, and the sounds, uh, particularly the big sounds. So I hope you enjoyed our uh, tour of the chancel organ uh, on Tuesday. So I'll just, uh, we're gonna be mostly right here today, but uh, just to refresh your memory, we were up in the chancel organ. We, we talked about the, the case and facade. You're looking now at the one opposite the organ console. Just remember there's, there's another one on this side, just like it, except it's very shallow. Next to that is the, there's a, a, a little narrow hallway with some pedal pipes. Then there's the swell division, which is enclosed with those louvers we talked about. And then in the far right corner, the choir division, which is where we began our tour up in the organ chamber, that little room that had a few sets of pipes in it, also with louvers to, to uh, enclose the sound. So that's what we looked at on Tuesday, the inside of the organ on Tuesday. Uh, and next Tuesday, we'll be looking at the inside of the organ in the back gallery. Uh, today, what we're gonna do is talk about what controls all of that. And that's called the console. So this big uh, sort of cockpit, as it were, here is the organ console. This particular console was uh, built and added to at Grace Church in 2000, between 2008 and 2010. Uh, it actually went in by 2010. Uh, it was built by the firm of Colby down in Tennessee. And it was that project where a uh, number of digital or electronic stops were added to the organ. As you may remember, we, we referenced a number of speakers up in the, up in the chambers in addition to pipes. Um, so the, the old 1959 Casabank console, which only had three keyboards and sat right here, but only had three keyboards, uh, that was, was, I think, in quite, you know, was falling apart, to be honest. Uh, it had seen its lifespan. Uh, and so uh, my predecessor added this console and all of the digital stops. So we have almost 200 draw knobs here, uh, about 100 covering the uh, pipe portion of the organ and about another hundred covering the digital stops on the organ uh, that were added in 2010. So the console is actually massive. We can, we can say that. I've, I've played some large consoles in, in my time, played some large organs, uh, particularly Woolsey Hall at Yale University, one of the largest organs in the world. Uh, and it had, I think, fewer draw knobs than this, <laughs> maybe. And uh, I was the assistant at St. Bartholomew's in New York City for several years, and that's the largest pipe organ in New York City. And at the time that I was there, it actually had fewer draw knobs than this, I think. So it's amazing how, how, much, uh, how many draw knobs are here. So just talk a little bit about how all of this works to control the things that you saw uh, there. First of all, obviously keyboards. I think most people know what those are. It looks a little bit like a short piano keyboard. And we have four of, of those here on the organ. And basically, one keyboard represents one division of the organ. So, for example, that little division where we began on uh, uh, Tuesday, the choir division, which David's showing you again in the corner there, that one little room full of pipes, there were six sets of pipes in there, that those pipes live on this bottom keyboard here at the console. So this is called the choir division. Now, when we talk more about the back organ and get into that, we can explain how multiple divisions can live on one keyboard. But for now, think about that first little room we went in, that lives here. So if I wanna play those pipes, I'm gonna play them down on this keyboard called the choir. So there's a set of stops over to my right, David can show you and I'll point, it says choir. You notice it doesn't say gallery, it just says choir. Right next to it, it says gallery, great. We'll talk about that, but that means that's the back organ. If it doesn't say anything, at the top, that means it's the front organ. So it's one narrow strip of stops, really quite quite a, a limited number of stops for that little tiny division. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, you're seeing some red dots uh, that I've added to the organ. There's nothing on any of the stop knobs that indicate whether or not they are pipes or digital. And uh, that sort of bothered me when I got here, so I've put red dots on the pipe stops. A few may have fallen off, but anyway, so, so this organ has, the choir organ has six stops. I'll just give you an example. I'm going to pull one of those stops. Um, this is the viola stop, and it was the one closest to those swell shades. So I've pulled the stop out. That's now engaged that set of pipes. So by having this out, this comes the expression pulling out all the stops. You know, that means pulling them all out, like getting everything going. I've pulled out one. So right now, this is the only stop on the organ that's engaged. 
And so those pipes are waiting on their wind chest. And when I now press a key on the keyboard, it will open the valve under the toe. We showed you the toe of the pipe and we get sound. Now it's amazing how quickly that can happen. It's a, it's a fairly good distance from here to there and still it's almost instant. And even if you play a fast passage, Um, as you know, and I, I won't focus on this too much today, but as you know, we've talked about the fact that the pipe portion of the organ is, is in need of restoration. So, for example, in this choir division, that D, which is a very much needed note because it's right in the middle of where the right hand would play all the time, doesn't play on any of the stops in that division. So while all the others do play, that sort of becomes an almost useless division of pipes, about you know 450 pipes that aren't really helpful to us because that doesn't play on any of them. Uh, that might seem like it's a simple fix. It's actually not a simple fix. It's, it's quite a complicated fix. Um, but the rest of the notes, so I can, again, show you how that works. There's a flute there in that division. I need to play in D flat major so we don't do this anymore. There's a, a shorter flute, a four-foot flute. And there's uh, a little pair of pipes. We talked about these, the German name Erzähler. They're tuned slightly apart to undulate. And lastly, the very first pipes we showed you, the very unusually shaped English horn pipes, which are reed pipes. Uh, we explained how there was a reed and a boot at the bottom of those pipes. So it has a bit of a buzzy sound. Uh, these pipes uh, cannot be tuned very well right now, but I'll play a bit of it for you anyway. Bit. If I stack all of these things up together, this is sort of the sound we get. And again, those pipes are enclosed, so if I go to the gas pedals that we talked about down here, this particular one, I'm going to move, this controls those choir swell shades. So I'll play a chord and hold it, and I'm going to close and open the... So you can see that, and actually maybe David can hold the phone up, you can see it actually happen in front of the pipes. That's how we control the sound of pipes if they're in a closed division. So that's one of our keyboards, that's one of our divisions here. Uh, another division is the swell division. So the swell lives one, two, three up from the bottom. And, and that would be the part of the organ that we would use to accompany the choir mostly. It sits right above the choir. It's in an ideal situation. It's sitting right above the choir stalls, directly across from the organist, perfectly placed to accompany the choir. Uh, the only problem, of course, again, with, our, with our, our pipe swell division is that there are so, so many dead notes. For example, E flat doesn't play on any note in the swell. You may remember from the swell division, that's when we came in and crawled up a little ladder and then we were in a big square room with lots of pipes. So the choir had six ranks of pipes. The swell has 17 ranks, much bigger division with bigger pipes um, and, and, and some pipes that would do well to accompany the choir. This one, the eight foot diapason, which is sort of organ sound. That's specifically organ sound, but I'll just play, and David can even show my hands, I'm gonna play slowly up the chromatic scale, which means playing every note. Remember, there's one pipe. When I pull a stop, that's a set of pipes or a rank, and there's one pipe for every note. So your basic rank stop is gonna have 61 pipes, because you have to have a pipe for every note. Dead. Dead, dead. You notice that the higher and lower ends, particularly the higher ends, more notes play because they get used less, and so the pneumatics have worn out in a different in a different way. But you have to treat it as one thing. This might be a good time to just talk quickly about. We saw different kinds of pipes. There are basically two kinds of pipes. There are flue pipes. Like remember, we said like chimney flue, F-L-U-E. I picked one up and just blew in the toe. It's just basically like a big flute. That's one big class of pipes. The other was the reed pipes that had the boot and the tuning wire. We showed you those. In the organ, reed pipes uh, constitute things like English horns, trumpets, tubas, 
trombones, oboes, clarinets, those are all reed pipes in the organ. Uh, the flues would be things like a flute or a string pipe, like a viola or a, or a, a, a sort of a violin stop, viola, violone, or a principle. That's what I was just playing. A principle is not imitative of anything. A, a diapason or a principle is just organ sound. It's not imitating a string or a flute or a reed or anything in the orchestra, it's just organ sound. So the flue pipes, F-L-U-E, which is most of the pipes in the organ, are either principles or flutes or strings. So that's the principle, here's a flute. And here is a string. So those are the different kinds of, of pipes. We also talked about uh, a set of pipes called a mixture, where I showed you uh, four little rows of pipes together. And you play one note, and you get four pipes at once. Those are represented by new Roman numerals. Now, I've, I've covered it up here, but this one is called a plaju, and it would have a Roman numeral four right behind my red dot there. If the dot weren't there, it would have a Roman numeral four, much like the one above it has a Roman numeral three, except that's a digital stop and turned on its side, so we'll ignore that for now. So the plageu, that little, those were those little four rolls I, rows I told you it looked like little rows of metal trees. If I play one note, I'm getting four pipes. And you hear this series of overtones. Now you don't play that by itself. If I played Happy Birthday just on a mixture, it'd sound very funny. You can sort of tell that's what it is, but it's odd. It's meant to go on top of other pipes, so I pull a couple of other pipes like this, and then I add that mixture and we get the brilliance. Again, sort of organ sound, as it were. There, there are three reed pipes in the swell, and you may remember when I climbed up and then David climbed up onto that platform, and there were reed pipes on either side, and I showed you that one of the resonators was missing from one, and we put it in another one as pipe storage. Those are these three pipes. Uh, the bassoon, it's called here a fagot, but that's just another word for bassoon. Then the trumpet at eight foot. Again, you can hear these are terribly out of tune and they, they just won't hold their tuning because they need to be rebuilt. And the four foot oboe or oboe. Clearly that one's not supposed to sound that way. Right, so if I put them all together, it's a pretty wretched sound right now, but that, that, so we don't use those. They just sort of live there until, until someday. Um, but that's the swell division. If I pile the swell division all together, sort of like this, and it's gonna sound you know, a little, little wonky, but. And it's enclosed, so I can close the shades on it. which is what makes it really wonderful for accompanying the choir because you can make it louder and softer as the music demands. And the last division in the front here, really the last division, there's a bit in the pedal, we'll talk about that, is the great division. And that's down here behind the case and in the case. You may remember we talked about the front pipes, particularly the, the big row of pipes right there in the front where you see the mouths of the pipes. And then the three and three on either side, those play. The ones behind them, remember you've got a sneak peek back at the big ones, they're really cut off, they're like garbage cans with no bottom. And then ones on the ends are all decorative. So those are part of the principal or diapason on the grate. And this, so you can hear some of the lower ones right there in the front. The first one I'm playing, of course, doesn't play, it's dead. There's one, you can tell that needs regulation. Can you, you hear the rattle and buzz, that pipe needs to be remade. So those are going right up there in the front of the case. But then, here's what happens. I'm going chromatically. Dead, 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 dead. You get the idea. So that stop is useless. Now that should be that should be the basis of the front organ, the eight-foot diapason or principle, 
on the great division, which is the second manual up and the main division, it's called the great because it's great, the grand, the big, grand organ in French. Um, it's in German, they Hauptwerk. Yeah, Hauptwerk, because it sort of sits near your head. Or it's at the top of the organ, sort of like the head of the organ. Um, so, but here we really can't use that uh, because there are just so many dead notes. I mean, I can play it, but it, it, you know, it's, it doesn't really help. So the great division is, is relatively small. There's some pretty stops. The four-foot flute is very beautiful. Again, so many dead notes, you can't use it really, but here's, here are a few examples. It's called flute harmonique. If it's harmonic, that means that it's, it, uh, they have holes in the pipe. When you get to a certain place in the set of pipes, they put a little hole in the pipe, which creates a, a sort of an overtone effect, and, and there's more power, and it sings more beautifully. So it really does work nicely if, if it actually worked. It'd be, it'd be great if it worked. So you can combine the manuals. I'll play something very quiet on this choir manual. I'm going to shut the box down. I'll get some very soft sounds, and I'm going to use that flute we just pointed out as a little solo sound. On the swell, I can do a similar thing. I'll solo out the oboe. I'm going to play it an octave lower than, than it lives at. Whoops. Those are some of, some of the ways you can use, use the, the stops. Um, you see I'm hitting some buttons here. Might as well talk about those a bit. So there are lots of these buttons. This one is a cancel button and it makes all the stops go away. If I have lots of stops on and I want to get rid of them all at once, I simply hit general cancel and it just, they all, they all go in. Everything goes away. So I'll do that again and show it up like that. It's very handy. Um, these are pistons or uh, divisionals or well, generals or divisionals, but really they're pistons. So you can set combinations of pipes. So I'm just going along like this. These are all preset. I've set them. David has levels of his that he sets his way. I set mine. And then we can get changes very quickly. So for example, if you wanted to start something very quiet or quiet-ish and quickly go to something loud, instead of reaching and adding all the pipes this way, you can go... So they are very, very handy. You might notice they have little lights next to them. The general pistons do. So you know what general you're on. And that's really helpful because we also have another feature that's relatively new in organ design, maybe in the last 30 years, 25, 30 years, uh, called a next button. And so I could sit here and do this. the next button which is available here here and with my even more importantly with my toe David can show it to you there it says next it's right past the gas pedals as it were and so I can do what I just did with my toe so I can be very busy playing the organ I'll just hold a chord so I can build a wonderful crescendo or decrescendo simply by setting all of these and then hitting, just hitting next. It's very, very handy. Uh, all of these are, are divisionals. In other words, these are pistons like those, except they're set aside. You see that one says chancel swell. So when we were talking about the chancel swell division, these pistons play and will set the stops just in the chancel swell. So if you're playing along and you need to add or particularly under accompanying the choir and you want to add or take away stops, you can just sort of ride along with your thumb here and, and do that. Uh, so those, that's what a lot of these do. More of the sort of more of the same with these, because we have the digital part of the organ, and the digital part of the organ can be played in the front or the back. The, the pipes obviously are played where they are. You, we don't move those around. Uh, we have a, a couple of things. Uh, the digital portions of the organ. There's some divisions called bombard, solo. On this side we have grand raci. It sort of bothers me to have to call it that, but that's what it's called. Those can be assigned via these uh, buttons on what we call the key cheeks. 
you can assign those divisions to any keyboard. They don't, they don't really have their own home. You can assign them. And the ones on this side allow you to put the, the digital sounds either in the front or the back or both. They, they naturally live up front, but then you can, you can put them in the back or you can have them in, in both places. So that's what all of those buttons are. So the digital stuff requires that we have a lot more buttons. And then Dave, let's just go ahead and talk about these. These are the couplers. So we talked about the fact that, you know, some divisions of the organ live on one manual or one keyboard or on the pedals. These uh, tablets, these sort of rocker tablets that go up and down like that, they allow you to either connect those divisions or put a division in another place. Um, so if you see something that says, for example, chancel swell to pedal, we haven't even talked about the pedals, but I'm going to pull that, um, that trumpet pipe on the front swell that we were playing earlier. Now, I haven't pulled any pedal stops, but I've said for the chancel swell to be on the pedal. So that trumpet is now in the pedal division. I could also put it on the grate. So chancel swell, there's the trumpet. But by pushing this, I've moved it down there to the grate. So these allow you to move things around or hook them together. They're called couplers and they, they give you a lot more flexibility in the organ. We have double sets because we have a set for the front organ and a set for the back organ, and you can use them all together. Um, other interesting things about the console, let's take just a minute. So we didn't talk about the pedal division. We'll quickly do that. Up here, the pedal division, really just a few stops. The main stop, the diapason, was removed in 2010. As I mentioned, about half the pipes are in the basement, and only the speakers, speakers for digital sounds are on here and they disconnected the other diapason pipes. Uh, so, so that doesn't play. Um, there is a set of pipes, the Borden pipes, that David showed you when, you when we entered the second chamber upstairs. There were some big wooden pipes right as you came in the door and he was showing you those. I'll play some of those with my feet, because that's where they live, but it, you have to, it's I'm not even sure the, the, our camera will pick it up or the phone. That's really, that's one independent stop left in the pedal. The other is that trump, is the sort of trombone. And I, we, if you remember, we, we crawled through the swell and we were in a little narrow hallway that had two sets of pipes, the great trumpet, which doesn't play at all. And then the, the trombone in the pedal. And I showed you the lowest one, which was mitered and curled around and how it had bent really badly. I also think I told you it was at about a 70 degree angle. I think it was about a 30 degree angle. I was going the wrong way with my angles. Um, but I'll play some of this for you. Lots of dead ones. So, so far, everything I've played is dead. That one is the one that's bent. So it still functions, but it needs to be rebuilt. But so many dead ones, it's really, they're unusual, unusable. But that's really the pedal division. So we rely on these couplers to take stops from the manuals and put in the pedal so that we so that we can get more sound down in the pedal. Uh, the back organ has a much larger pedal division, lots of independent pipe work just in the pedal, so it, it doesn't rely in the same way on these uh, that, that this does. Um, so I should probably just say a couple of things about uh, some of the computer aspects. We have, a, we have a little computer readout screen over here, and this is not unique to the organ because the organ has digital pipes. Most pipe organs these days have this same setup. Uh, it allows you to have different levels of memory. And uh, David's showing you how you can climb the memory level there. So all of these preset buttons that we can set, you can then change memory levels and set them all again and again and again. And we also have memory file. We won't just change that, but you can see the memory file here. So you can change the memory file and then you can do all of those levels again. So there are lots and lots of levels of memory. If we have guest organists when they come to play the Thursday concerts, we can give them their own whole memory level and, and it doesn't interrupt what we're doing. Uh, you can actually, one of the interesting things that you can do is transpose. And people sometimes think this is just limited to digital organs. It's not. Uh, the organ in my former parish, which was completely a pipe organ, had a transposer. And the, it's just that this, the computer signal if you tell it to transpose up or down, it just it just tricks and tells a different pipe to play. So I'm gonna play a pipe note and I'm gonna transpose. That's not a good example because that one has so many dead notes it's not showing you. Let's see if I can find one that actually has let's do the choir, David, because that mostly that plays. Here we go, we'll try again.
very cool. So when the soloist shows up for the wedding and she assured you, or he assured you that they could sing the Malat Lord's Prayer in B flat and you find out 10 minutes before the wedding they really can't and they need it a minor third away, you might be brilliant enough to transpose or you could just dial it and that's really handy. So uh, even uh, when we someday do our restoration project and have just a pipe organ again, we'll still have a transposer because it's really helpful. No reason not to. Bach would have loved it, I'm sure of it. Um, let's see, what have I missed, David? What have I not talked about? Maybe some of the toe, we talked about the, the next button. These, these are called toe studs and they basically are just like the, the preset pistons that we pressed up, up both, you know, they can be preset and they just set combinations of stops. It's just that sometimes you're, if you're, if you're busy with your hands playing, you might be able to get a right foot free or a left foot free to hit one that you couldn't do otherwise, and you don't have to you know, miss a note to do that sort of thing. So it's, it's, really, it's really quite quite the cockpit. Um, and then I guess just a few things that are not sort of really directly related to the organ. This, we don't have this on. This is a, a screen that has a, we have a camera above our heads, which uh, we installed last summer, actually David did, and it allows us to see uh, all over the church, basically. We can see all the way back to the front doors, the main aisle, the lower communion table when we're set up down there, the choir stalls, the high altar. It's really, really helpful for pretty for weddings, that sort of thing. You can watch processionals. Uh, and we have a, a, a very fancy command center here with a, with a joystick. So you can actually just, even though we have some views preset, you can just dial around and just and see what you want to see or what you need to see. That's very, very helpful. Uh, because you're sort, as you can tell, so so hidden back here, and so uh, uh, hidden from everything. Choir as well. It's like you're being in your own world. That's why it's so helpful now to have have David here, so that I can be in front of the choir and he's here. And uh, I felt so cut off from them before. Um, so that's that's a look at the console and and how it controls, particularly what we saw last week uh, or on on uh, Tuesday. So on Tuesday of next week what you're gonna see is the equivalent, but in the back. And we can refer back to things we talked about at the console. And then we'll see, maybe even next Thursday, we'll do another console visit to take us through some of what we, so you can hear some of what we see in the back organ. Um, again, this console was put in, in it, it was installed just before 2010, I think, um, and controls the front organ, the back organ, and all the digital uh, sounds as, as well. This is, this is our cockpit, this is from where it all happens. So I hope that's helpful, and I hope you've uh, learned some things, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. We'll have our climbing gear on and uh, give you what we hope is a real thrill. So have a great weekend.